We are in the cellar uh, underneath my house at the moment. What I thought it'd be kind of cool to do would be to take you on a bit of a cellar tour of all the original sort of training cracks and exercises that me and Pete did way back in the day. So I think that was kind of maybe nine, ten years ago for training for Century Crack. I'll have a go at all these old training exercises and sequences of crack. And what I thought might be fun is to maybe just go back and almost like grade them and say how hard they are, how they feel now, whether we've progressed and how those exercises work for training, like basically what the idea is, is um, and how hard they are. I've got uh, basically the original off width sections. I've got the Hassinator here, which is next to me, which is all about like arm barring. And we use the concept of, you know, like all the dead hanging for your finger strength, but doing it for off width things. So kind of all the arm positions and how you get tension in the body. The original cellar roof cracks and, and then also our like knee bar, upside down sit up thing, which I have a feeling I probably can't do very much of at all anymore. I think we used to do 50. It was so, quite a few. Yeah, it was quite a few. And See I how many you can do now. I know, I'll probably go and like do 10 and I'll be gassing. But this will be quite good fun because I've not been on this for a really long time. So I'm kind of curious to see how it all feels. So should I start on the original off width? Yeah, start on the sentry box. Yeah, on the sentry box? Yeah, do it. See how that feels? Yeah. Do a few laps. Do a few laps and see what's what. This here is the original sentry crack. It's uh, hand and fist width in there. So quite a nice width, feet go in. It's like a between friend, friend five, friend six size. I think you'd maybe get a six if you absolutely rammed it really tight, but kind of like friend five. We used to go backwards and forwards on this in a really specific off width thing, roofing manner. There's a technique called a wide pony. And we used to do this in sets of 10. I guess there and back is 10 foot or so. So around a hundred foot per section. That feels like quite a lot, but <laughs> yeah. we'll see how this feels going back on it. I've not done any wide pony for about a year or something. So the key for this one is we're gonna having our palm facing us and then stacking our fist behind it. So a hand fist stack. So hand jam here, fist on this side. If I get tired, I'll swap that round and bring that palm to the front and that fist. I think it's quite nice to just keep swapping those around if the crack's really parallel. And then I'm frogging my two feet inside the crack. So the toes are pointing out and I'm getting really good foot jams. So I'll go down this end and start. So foot comes out. So you're always kind of like leading with your foot ahead of you. Then you bring your stack through and then you're shuffling the, that following foot back to match up. Little shuffle look along again. Bring my feet through, my hands through, sorry. Stacking, little shuffles. We've got this little X on here because there's a, uh, a screw Oh god, you know what, that's still really sharp. <laughs> a manufacturing problem. <laughs> yeah, up to the end. So you completed a lap, head back. How does it feel now? You know what, it's really painful on your feet. Yeah. That's the bit where I've really noticed it. Like, it's not, it's not too bad on, you know, the hand, the stack, the core, all that, but it's definitely pain, painful on the feet. These cracks are desperate when you've got uh, floppy shoes. Yeah, yeah. Absolute nightmare. <sighs> to that, that was a double. So there and back, so like 20 foot or so. And I would say I would grade that B2, three? B2, three. I can see you chuckling behind the camera to yourself, but I feel like that's what I I just can't imagine a V2 climber doing that. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> nah, they'd be fine. Yeah. No, if they liked good. cracks, yeah, yeah, they would be fine. Yeah, so I would say that's Cellar, cellar V2, 3. Cellar V2. Yeah, Cellar V2, V3. Uh, then we also have in the front of this a double fist stack. I haven't been on this for about, I don't know, eight years or something. So this is double fist stacks. So that's one fist on one side. You look like you tried a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, have you seen this end? No. Did we put, like, check this out. So, if we look underneath here, look. What's that? Like, a double fist doesn't even <laughs> sit. I've just got an arse in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh no, that's because we put the, the backer board in. Here, do you remember? This thing. Ah, because it was too wide. Yeah, because it was too wide, we built it wrong. So yeah. We had to put a, a board in. Okay, so I would say this crack, a single, is probably solid cellar V4. Uh, but that's definitely a little bit harder. And I remember us doing that a little bit as a backup. Yeah, yeah. I think that was like when we were talking about Sentry, and then we were worried that Stevie had screwed us over and told us the wrong size. And do you remember, I think it was like three months before we were about to go out and do the project, but we should just double check this. Let's just do some double fist stacking. Yeah. There's a backup. Oh, this one you should talk about, uh, just a little intermediate. We had a little hand jamming thing to train the legs. So you could hand jam, but do more legs. Yeah. yeah, so that was where you put your feet up into the crack, and then you get some nice little hand jams in here, and then you just shuffle along. Jam. It's funny, I come back on uh, how much of climbing have I done? About 30 foot or something. My feet are really hurting already. So that was that then. The Hastinator? Yeah, yeah, have a look at that. Hastinator it up. So the Hastinator is pretty wide. You can't get double fists, so they're not going to work. And so you're really now into the territory of chicken, chicken wings and arm bars inside. And the concept on this one was that we would get either an arm bar or a chicken wing and crack, hold that on one side, and hold that for like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, like a, a dead hang. We then added in an element where we then do like weight lifting and do like bicep curls and things on the outside to kind of add a, an element of difficulty on it. So I'll see what it feels like going back in and seeing what. <laughs> going back in there. It looks a bit dusty in there. It, it looks ancient. It's a bit mouldy, actually. Oh, I haven't done this for a while. Okay, so let's try. Try the chicken wing. How's that? Oh, it looks easy. Let's try the armbar. The armbar was always the more tricky one, wasn't it? Come on. <laughs> Is that hard? Okay, I'll have another go. Come on. Maybe it's just dusty in there. Bloody hell. Okay. Did we used to do arm bars with weights? Or was it chicken wings? Maybe it was chicken no, wings with weights. Chicken wings. Yeah. I'm gonna say arm bars might be a bit brutal. Come on. You're in. You're out. <laughs> Is that quite tricky? Yeah. Are you getting your shoulder engaged? Remember we, remember it's like left shoulder, because it was easier left side in than right side in because the offset. No, that feels really tricky. Come on, suck it in. Suck it in. Come on, squeeze. Come on. You're in. Hard. Did we really used to do that? Yeah, yeah, like sets of arm bars. Bloody hell, really? Yeah, quite powerful. I can't take the other hand off. Really? No. Hmm. I feel like you should have a quick go. Okay, <laughs> should I? Yeah, I really feel like... <laughs> okay. Okay, Pete, uh, so I couldn't do the arm bar move. I'm going to go left side in, and then I'm going to try left side in, then I'll try right side in, because I remember left side in being easier, because it's very, very small offset. Okay, it's yeah. Like, like the back of your shoulder again, isn't it? Yeah. I thought this this could be genuine cellar V6. Cellar V6. But it could be so rusty from blooming no arm barring for years. Yeah, good. Oh, I've got to take the other hand off. Yeah, that's why I was falling off. <laughs> because I was taking the other arm off to then, you know, do the theoretical arm bar, uh, the uh, the dumbbell curling. What, we used to take the other hand off? Yeah, that's why I was falling off. <laughs> I've got no problem with getting into the position and holding it. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. no, that's why I was bloody falling off. Okay, okay. <laughs> you want to see that other arm off doing some, you know, hypothetical dumbbell curls. Let's see this. See the gas. Come on, let's see the V6. Whoop! And he's on. Okay. <laughs> There's no way I can hold that. We never did that. Ooh. No, we didn't do that. I think we did. I think we've got worse. <laughs> no, we definitely didn't do that. 
actually try hard this time. Maybe try the easier side. That is the easy side. Oh, that was the easy side. That's a disappointing thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you think we... Armbarred? We armbarred and took the other hand off. Yeah, but you have to jam the other foot in as well. Yeah, no, there's no way I can do that. Not a chance. So that is an actual, num an actual V6 then? Yeah, I think that's probably V6, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's because we're freaking rusty. I think it's because we're rusty, yeah. Doing be. this kind of stuff. Must be. Get a proper US off width on this and they'll be fine. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because they would have been arm barring. I mean, to be fair, we did train for quite a long time on this stuff, so. Mm. I don't know. How much chimneying and off width thing do we do a year right now? One route a year? Yeah, if that. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly off width as anymore. Okay, just go full gas. Okay, full gas. Yeah, just everything in. Everything in. <laughs> and. On. Good. Okay, hang on. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's quite hard. New technique. Yeah. Because if I go this way in, and I can't get much of my, my left ass cheek in. Whereas if I go this way, the rest of my ass crack on the edge of the crack. Yeah. So crack on crack. Yeah. And then twist. Get Oh, you see now. You're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, now I feel like if I get that right, I feel like I can get more in. So. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. Okay, looking solid. Oh, you've got it. Did you just break the edge of the... Did I snap that one? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What, what is that for? I don't know, I think it's part of a shed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why there's part of a shed down here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I totally didn't do that then, I was just crimping at the back. Oh, were you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good effort, you had me fooled. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you got some sort of sneaky knee bar type no, thing no, on there. No, totally didn't do that then. Okay, so that's quite hard then. That was quite hard, yeah, definitely. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Knee bar sit-up machine, I guess. Yeah. You know what, I'm actually gonna remember a little incident that happened down here. Do you remember when we were doing this knee bar sit-up thing and we decided it'd be great to get a really heavy item out, which was the lawnmower. And then I loaded you up with the lawnmower, but all the petrol came out of the lawnmower when I loaded up on you. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Uh, so the idea was, um, this is like a knee bar sit-up machine, really good for the core and hip flexors. So the muscle here at the top of your leg, they get really strong, but they also get really tight. So just be aware of that if you do quite a lot of this training. And what we were aiming to do was just build up loads of volume. So we took a volume-based approach with our training. So just huge, huge core sessions where we do this, sit-ups, leg raises, crunches, dishes, just everything. Like I think some of the big weeks that we were doing were 10,000 core movement weeks uh, when we were doing a lot of core training. So it was very, very high volume. And we didn't do a lot of what you would classically class as being just typical strength training. So very low volume, high intensity work. But we got gripping strong on our core, just taking a volume approach. And so I'll show you this exercise here and we'll see if I can do, I don't know, 10 maybe, we'll see. Yeah, so what were we doing? before we thought maybe 40 to 50. Yeah, I think 50 was our max, but we broke it down into like for sets. I think it was down to 30s or 40s. Okay. Something. So you're going to go are you going to give us a max now? Yeah, I'll go all in. So yeah. get double knee bar behind here. Okay. Seven, eight, nine, ah, oh, smashing it. Ten, keep going. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, come on. Fourteen. Good. Get to twenty. Good, come on. Come on. One more. See the gas. Come on. Oh god, they feel hard now. Yeah. 
You know what was the limiting factor by a long way on that? What? Uh, hip flexors. Not core at all. It, it just shut down in hip flexors. During we were doing loads of that training for century and we could like see that our hip flexors were visibly getting bigger. Yeah, you got the burger hip flexor. Yeah, you got like a little burger at the top of our legs um, where we develop that muscle. We probably put on a like kilo two, or two kilos. Two kilos in burger hip flexor. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty amazing considering like we just focus so hard on one part of the body. Um, <laughs> so it was a kilo for each hip flexor. You basically had like a bag of flour at the top of each leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, at least we lost that after that project and that all went away. I hope you've enjoyed our little cellar tour. It's more like a historic cellar tour because I know many of you have been watching uh, mine and Pete's antics down the cellar. You'll have seen all the new stuff that we've been doing with the new 9A project and like all the thin hand stuff and it goes through all through to the like, other rooms down here as well. Um, but I think this should give you a bit of a sort of context to the historical stuff that we did down here and what we did you know like 10 years ago and I think for everyone out there if you're watching this and you're thinking like how do I get into crack training how do I get better it really is about just starting somewhere and building a base choosing stuff which is really specific to your goals so choose widths that are relevant to you choose an intensity which is going to match up with the goals that you have as well so don't train on 5 10 cracks all day long if you want to climb 512 cracks you need to make replicas and mimics of the intensity that you're going to be trying to perform at outside as well. Overall with your crack training think about intensity, think about the specificity of crack size, angle etc and then also think about taking a good long time to really get into it because you can't do this crack stuff and just instantly expect you know over one to two months that you're you know there and you're trained this stuff is just like all other forms of uh, climbing that it just it takes months and even years to really get good at. So stick at it and you will get there.